Is everybody uh, finished up? Everyone else good idea? Okay. Now what we would like to do is uh, have our volunteer from each group and uh, give us an example of a, a possible service failure that you guys came up with and also a solution. Real quick, one person wants to volunteer for me to do it. Okay, so we've kind of used this example a lot, but um, our issue is that we didn't meet the experience needs of the customer. So, like, if we overcoddled or if we did not give enough explanation at all, they felt really distressed and overwhelmed the entire time. And one thing was actually like to plan ahead was just being really open communication, even through like registration or like exactly what they're looking for in experience so that we can like facilitate that during the time instead of having to try and fix it later. Mm -hmm. So on, either on like registration forms or just like giving options for each package as well as like, do you want a more of a hands-on experience so that you sign up for them specifically. So. Yeah. Good way. So we have a lot of face-to-face -face interaction, uh, meeting at the booth and then down with like renting supplies or getting permits and also dealing with rangers. So a big issue for us would be basically our employees uh, being in a bad mood creating a negative environment for the customers. So for that, our solution is just having uh, a very good customer training and focusing on creating a positive environment uh, with the employees not bringing their personal issues into work. Definitely. Um, ours is like timing issues, so we want to make sure the servers are really prompt with like bringing menus, water, drinks, food and everything. Um, and I guess the way to just make sure that happens is to have really good training at the beginning and like make sure management is like kind of just keeping an eye on everyone, making sure that everyone's prompt. Um, Tyler brought up that something that happens at restaurants a lot is like if there's like spills, like if someone if a server like spills something, we need to like train our employees like what to do when it happens and also we could like help with their dry cleaning or just like some way to make them not feel so bad that we spilled on them. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. It's like the last thing they'd expect. Yeah. And they obviously I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, either way. Um, one of ours is that maybe on the weekends there might be too many people that come into the winery or the amount of staff that we have to handle it. And if that happened, you have a staff member who can help to move people around the outside interior areas or different areas throughout the winery and especially make sure that there is enough staff at the time for this um, So a big thing with like restaurants or with country clubs would be people feeling like they're being overcharged for something or they were charged twice or there's an issue with like their accounts or whatever. Um, so we can just make sure that we keep really good track of everyone's purchases and that we have an idea of, like email confirmation every time they purchase something, whether it's like a golf lesson or something at the restaurant or something at the pool, it would email them so they could be totally aware of what they're spending. Yeah. You can even maybe incorporate sort of a reward system in that email to, um, if they keep racking up a lot of purchases, they can get a discount on something in the future. So you can use that too. Is there one more? Yeah. yeah. So if our ride broke down like, in the middle of the we would have a really good PR team. Okay, now that you guys uh, came up with examples, we came up with uh, an example as well for each of your guys' companies. And one, it, uh, it deals with how to recover, and two, just ways to continue to keep your customers happy so that um, to try to prevent uh, service recovery. Uh, so the first one is uh, for the restaurants out there. Sorry for the outdated names um, <laughs> that we can probably learn. Um, <laughs> So for uh, Steve's Steakhouse and the Chisma Light Seafood, um, basically, your restaurants, you might want to think about allowing phones, picture taking, and tweets during meals to allow uh, customers to be in touch at all times. And um, this is kind of a new trend in uh, some restaurants that we found in our article. Uh, some restaurants are just allowing phones because before it was really improper to have your phone at dinner and um, just Obviously not the whole meal, but maybe just if there's a problem or if there's something you really enjoy, you can uh, use the phone or social media to uh, keep the customers in touch and be 
happy. And uh, for the California State Parks, uh, we found a uh, website, uh, www.mapmyride.com, and um, basically this allows you to set up personal routes and trails for customers. Um, that's a uh, that's a bike ride route for um, you guys' uh, park. And basically, maybe you guys can think about uh, setting up personal routes um, within your guys' parks to um, allow the customers to uh, like kind of do what they want to do, not just have like general ones, like maybe experience a new one that no one's ever done before. And a way you can do this is a sign up through a Facebook or um, maybe on your website and uh, just to allow easy access for the customers. And for the Blue Robin uh, Winery, um, what some companies are doing is um, they're actually sending out flowers and gifts to customers who tweet about having a bad experience or a day. And this kind of goes along the lines of uh, acting more like a friend rather than a company. Just uh, developing authentic relationships with your customers rather than being robotic and uh, just not being really friendly with them at all. Um, for the Valarca Adventures, um, you guys can tweet about lessons and reservations. This is uh, kind of just keeping your customers happy and um, allowing them to uh, see maybe uh, <laughs> discounts that are available and raffle prizes for families um, that would like to uh, come check you guys out. And for the Slow Theme Park, uh, what Disney did is they used Twitter to help promote uh, special events and allow awareness to the customers. Um, so it doesn't have to be Twitter, it can kind of be anything. And basically it's just informing the customers every day what's going on and um, just trying to keep the experience as positive as can be. And last is uh, Club Corporation. Um, maybe, I don't know, use Twitter to let customers sign up for uh, tournaments if you guys ever host one. And also a good idea would maybe be um, post pictures of uh, the course and the facilities there to um, attract the new customers and kind of, to kind of just get a visual um, rather than just reading information because um, visual is very important. So uh, having uh, pictures would also help out with All right, so now we're going to kind of talk about handling complaints. Um, and just to, one last thing on that, uh, some of these things that you guys brainstormed, I know I mentioned to a couple groups, uh, these are great things to add to your employee training video, uh, just possible things that your employees may have to deal with and experience because, like we said, uh, service failures are inevitable. And so this kind of goes hand in hand with the complaints. So just a quick little guidelines for handling them. Uh, you want to make it easy for the customer to complain. Um, they don't want to feel like they're, they have to jump through a lot of loops or do a lot of things to get their complaint to you. You want to make it as easy as possible. Um, you want to respond quickly to each uh, complaint. And like we said, social media is a great way to do this. Uh, it allows you like instant response time, which is cool. Uh, third, you want to educate employees, like I was saying, with the uh, training video and stuff like that. You just always want to make sure they're prepared and know what to do when things do go wrong. Um, four, approach complaints as opportunities. Uh, this is a time to learn. You learn from your mistakes. Uh, and that, that's what can help make your company better. Five, uh, make complaints and complainers visible. You don't want to act like you're hiding anything. Uh, you want to be upfront and honest about what could have gone wrong or what did go wrong, um, and just publicly make the best effort you can to fix that. Um, you want to reward complainers, so this comes in like like the dry cleaning idea, stuff like that. Just helping them out and doing everything you can to make it right. And finally, one little thing you can do is just stop calling them complainers or stop <laughs> calling them complaints. Um, it's kind of like a you know, condescending or negative term. So just make it easy for them to do it. Um, and going along with that, I found an article on Forbes that talked about a couple things. So one, really important, like I've said, and I keep saying, just know that people will complain and things will go wrong. This doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It's just inevitable. We're the human race. We're not perfect. We're not machines. Um, so mistakes will happen. And 
Another thing that's important is don't assume you know the solution the customer wants. Don't just take actions without consulting them first. Um, you really want to make sure you're getting them what they do want, and you might have an idea in your head of what it is that they want, and it could be completely different from that. So just clear and open communication. And another huge one is don't strive for fairness. Like we saw in the opening video, um, maybe the cook spit in her food or did something like that. Um, obviously, if someone's making a complaint and making your day harder, don't go back and try and like get back at them. It obviously is terrible PR for your company and stuff like that. So don't strive to be fair, just strive to make it right. Um, like I said before, make sure you're learning from complainers. Um, and don't, a big one in learning though, is don't train or discipline your employees in front of other customers. So if something does go wrong, you don't want to bring that up in front of the customer by you know, disciplining them or doing stuff like that. Um, that's a big one. And lastly, uh, you want to always remember you're not doing anything special by making it right or making it the way it should have been in the beginning. So don't act like to the customer like you went all the way out of your way just to make it how it should have been from the start. You know, um, you just want to be really open and happy to help in any way you can. So I'll talk about guarantees, which is the last little thing that goes hand in hand with uh, service failures. So um, service guarantees are a marketing tool to reduce customer risk perception. Um, when you offer a guarantee with your product, the customer knows that even if something were to go wrong, that you stand behind your word and your company and your product and that you're there to help fix it. Um, so guarantees can complement a service recovery strategy. Um, like I said, they know you're there to back it up. And guarantees also raise standards across the whole industry. Um, by having a guarantee, you're saying that your product or your service will work and will be good and you have to live up to that and by making your services better your competitors are going to want to make theirs better and so all across the industry standards just go up and it makes everything better. Um, it also enhances a company's brand. People know that you have a guarantee behind your product. They're going to like that. They're going to want to hear that like we heard in the video again. Um, some people have a little bit of a different stance on service guarantees though. Some people think that Services can't necessarily be guaranteed because they're not like machines. If you have a camera or a computer, you can put like a hard guarantee that you are promising that that machine will work. And if something goes wrong, there might be a part that you can change out to fix, you know? Services are a little different. Um, humans can't necessarily be guaranteed like that. Uh, things are going to go wrong. And you can't really just fix or change out a part of like a bad haircut, you know? Like, it just doesn't really work, things will happen. But just because you can't promise that it's going to be perfect or work every time, you still can guarantee the customer satisfaction. So that's kind of what you're standing behind. And the last couple things, a um, couple upsides of guarantees. Uh, they force firms to focus on the customer's wants and needs throughout the entire process and customer journey. Because if they're guaranteeing it, then they have to make sure you're happy all the way through. Um, it establishes clear standards, which create an image of what your company stands for, for both your customers and your employees, which is always important. Um, it requires companies to seek meaningful feedback, like we've been talking about with our customer assessment tool. Um, if you have a guarantee, you want to make sure you're living up to the guarantee and make sure that your customers are really happy. And it also requires companies to understand reasons of failures and where things might go wrong, like we've been talking about. And especially, it helps, um, it helps with the gap five, with the expected and perceived. Because if you have a guarantee, you're saying this is exactly how it's going to go, then hopefully there should be a little less of that gap of what you're delivering and what, or what they expect you to deliver and what you actually are delivering. So. Yes. Can I just ask if anyone can think of like an outdoor company that has probably the best guarantees out there that you can return anything to? REI. Yeah, REI. 
you can literally wear your shoes, and people take a piss a little bit with this, but wear your shoes, sorry, if I take a piss, I mean, it's a UK phrase. It means they uh, take advantage, sorry. It's probably, a, I'm not talking much about this. Um, so, but people take advantage of it a, a wee bit, but um, yeah, people can wear their shoes for two years and come back and return. Um, and to be honest, I mean, it's one reason that if I'm getting outdoor stuff, I, I'm not worried about getting an REI because if something doesn't work, I know that I can, can swap it out. So I just thought that's a really nice example of what you're talking about there. And, and that's a big part of their brand with REI. Yeah. 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 So, so, yeah. so guarantees are important. Uh, I might want to think about having them. Uh, it's another thing you can talk about in your training video. You want to make sure your employees are clear on what your guarantees are too. There can't be any miscommunication between the people up top on what they think they're guaranteeing and the actual um, service that's delivered. So, but yeah, that pretty much concludes our presentation. Um, don't think we have anything else. So no, I think that's it. I hope thank you guys for our time. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, while you're in your groups, if you'd be so kind as to provide one to two points of positive feedback for this group and one to two points of constructive feedback, that would be. All right. Are we ready? All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our discussion today about the service recovery process. Today, um, we'll be discussing these uh, certain concepts and ideas that are go that go behind the service recovery process, as well as the actual process itself. Um, recovery is very is extremely important for any business, and um, but they all have their own unique aspects. Uh, dealing with customer complaints will be unique for each and every business. But it is important to realize that a service failure is um, almost <coughs> inevitable in some cases. And uh, customers and the company have both realized that they have to accept these as they come and they have to deal with them rather than trying to uh, get rid of them altogether. So as you can see here, proper service recovery can lead to more loyal company or more loyal customers, empowered staff members, can uh, generate some positive word of mouth and branding for your company, and just leads to higher overall customer satisfaction. So, service failure is can be thought of as a critical incident in the customer journey. And whether or not it's a positive experience or a good thing is up to debate, but we do know that these service failures can be seen as opportunities for the company to uh, grow and develop and um, plan for the future. And so that's one of the really uh, important parts of the customer service recovery process is that it should be seen as an opportunity, not as something that's going to be detrimental. But you do have to handle it correctly. So first, we're just going to show a quick video here. I'll pull it up. Um, this is by no means going to be an example of perfect service recovery on the uh, part of the staff members, but it's just going to be a good, fun way for your, you guys to be introduced to the topic. There's some movie clips that you may or may not have seen, um, and they're really kind of just highlighting the aspect of emotions in the uh, service recovery process and how they can become personalized um, from the point of view of the customer as well as the staff. So Even though they aren't serious, it is just some examples of possible failures that could go wrong too. So just start thinking about how, what type of failures could apply to your company specifically. Uh, um, yeah. Is the sound wrong? It should be. I don't hear it though. Jeff, turn it on. Is it on in the... Oh, I didn't know. Nice. Oh. You're on oh, well, well, would you like me to take the food back and bring it out the fruits? Yeah, and let it dry out under the heat lamps. Just give me the food. Wait. Did that waitress listen to a word I said? This steak is medium rare. I asked for it medium, and I wanted extra gravy on my mashed potatoes. Let me ask you something. How hard is your job? How intelligent do you have to be to take a food order? Jesus! Ma'am, ma'am, you're absolutely right, and uh, I apologize. 
I'm going to get this fixed for you right away. Good. Now I can finish my salad.
get is, even if it didn't happen to you, like you hear a friend who had a terrible experience at some place, like you're still going to go tell your friends, even though it might not be a worse experience. So that's the idea. So we'll give you guys a couple minutes to just mingle and start talking. Start sharing. If you have any questions, you can do a trip. I'm going to stay with my family. I had a nice encounter with the boy at the booth. It's all going to be excellent. Really? I want to do it. Can you zoom out of this? It's like too close. No one's going to do it.